classes. We have Charlene, Charlene, how are you? Yeah, I was looking for my car from yesterday. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. You're the brains on the operation. That's really no. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes get a little overpowering, though, know, like, because sometimes I like, take over like, and start talking all the time. I did not tell that by your voice at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right, can I've come from that kind of deal. I don't have my little thing. I'm okay. sorry. No I thought I had to put it in my bag. Okay. And if you will, yeah. as people come in and we're like oh, on for right, right, for I'll being late, um, but but in a nice way, yes. yeah, make I'll them feel it. good about it, yeah. Um, well, and then they have to do push ups, and then push ups, or tell a joke. No, if you can, like on the break, make sure everyone's signed in. Yes, is a sign list. There and is. It. It's, I've got it going around, and then I'll come get that at the very end. Cool. I'll be um, on. Yeah. At my desk, listening to your wisdom. So if you see me doing this, then right. your So I'll be on listening. So if you do need something, ask them to text me or something. I'll come right in. Okay. Um, I know. All right. Let's get started, guys. Um, all right. So my name is my name is John Pace. I'm the owner of the Pace Richmond Group here. Been in the business for 17 years. Uh, 13 with KW. I've uh, got a team of 10. Last year, we did about 145 homes for our clients, 85% were referred to us, um, and we're growing. And um, the whole foundation of what where we got to today is this class. It's all about lead generation. No one ever says, I can't get into real estate because I want to get on the phone and call people. No. I know you got to go up in the morning to get on the phone and start finding business today. Everyone joins real estate because. The money. The money, great. What else? Flexibility. Flexibility. What else? Why you doing real estate? Huh? Public people. Public people. And so a lot of times lead generation feels like I'm hassling people. Mm -hmm. I am bothering them. Mm -hmm. And I want you to change your mindset to the point of what was this guy saw? So how many realtors are in Michigan? Like 6,700. 6, yeah. And I think. Only the top 10% sell more than four or eight homes a year. So God forbid a client who should be working with you works with a realtor that has no experience. So my mindset is they should be working with me because I can help them better than someone else would. So when you're calling people, your standpoint is not to take yourself business, but it's to be an advisor to them and help them. To get them where they need to go with their financial assets, wherever they're trying to do, versus do you want to buy or sell? Do you want to buy or sell? Do you want to buy or sell? Does that make sense? All right. So today's gonna be all about the system behind it and how we look at it and how we grow through it. And this foundation can get you wherever you want to go. As big as your business wants to go. And your business can be awesome as an individual agent, and your business can be awesome if you're not ever selling again. And that's up to you where you want this. Okay. Uh, a few rules. Um, we're in sales. It's a phone call you have to take. I get it. Please walk out way far away from here so we can't hear you. I prefer you to stay, but if you catch a call, go ahead and do it. Um, you got to answer text. Be real quick about it. I'm not actually publicly shaming people for uh, you got to do a quick business text. But if you're doing it over and over and over again, we'll have a conversation. Um, so let's, that, let's get started here. Let's see here. Do the clickers. Bear with you guys. Come on, Clifford. I'm going to do it right here. Let me see. Point works. There we go. You're good. That's Mr. Mouse. No, that was just that was me because I was in the group. So that, that's all me. Okay. You're good now. All right. Uh, so we have real estate expert, lead generation, lead follow up, and transaction. Why is lead generation important? Yes, but what does that mean? That's 
Yes. If you took every single class in real estate and knew exactly what you're doing, if you had no one to work with, do you have a business? Mm -hmm. No. So all things included, you should be spending as much more time as possible regenerating, finding business, or you can call it client cultivation or relationship building. You don't have to call it regeneration. Whatever makes you happy and feels right, that's the number one job you should be doing right now, and you can figure the rest of it out. You can call some treats, you can call us, and you, you can find answers. Finding people is the most important part of this job. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about generating leads and growing your database. We're gonna use uh, section five and section six. Hold on one second. All right, my computer is turning off because I did not bring my charger. All right, let me ask this. Who's having success lead generating these days? Having success with lead generation? Who's doing well? I'm starting to. You started to? I'm starting to again. Okay, you're starting to again? Yeah. Getting traction behind it? Yeah. People like to talk to you? So when you call them, do they say, uh, Oh, no. Okay. I say, Myrna, yeah. great to hear from you. I some of them do because I have some, you know, I'm going back like 10 years that I haven't called somebody. So they're happy to hear from you? Yeah. They're surprised to hear from me, actually. And what's in the back of my mind when we call somebody? They don't want to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> they want to hear from you. Your database is usually people who know you and like you already. If they don't like you, they don't have a problem. All right. All right. You are the lead generator. We're running the lead generation model, your sphere of influence, expanding your sphere of influence because yes, you have a database, but you can't grow if you don't grow your database. Talk about best practices today, we'll do a recap and ahas for this section, and then we'll go into the next part about building your database at that point. Things are moving on me. I mean, that you, Robbie? That might have been me, yeah. <laughs> All right, unpack this, guys. My fear of failure was greater than my fear of regeneration. Why does Gary say this? You don't want to fail. I just want to fail. Whereas most people will say, my fear of regenerating was greater than my fear of failure. If you're not willing to get on the phone or use social media, door knock, Open houses, there's a gazillion ways you can talk to people. I've seen people go into Home Depot, just walk around Home Depot. That would never happen with you. But the people who do it and do it well, because their fear of failure was greater than their fear of actually talking to people. I feel like that's Lindsay's quote. What was that? I feel like that's Lindsay's quote. Lindsay says the same thing. Walmart. I, remember, I don't know if you heard that. That's right, you're in bold. She did that. Yep. Yeah. No way. <laughs> she built her um, foundation. She did it. Big, though, yeah. so. talking, finding ways to place to talk to people, right? Find this to when I got into business, um, I was doing triathlons. Uh, and so I went to, I, I was a college swimmer and college coach. So I went to the triathlon people and said, hey, if you'll let me coach your people once a month, actually twice a month, um, will you give me access to the database? They had 700 people. So I did it for free. And I would coach. And I started sponsoring races, and I would walk up and down the registration line with an iPad with a pad saying, Hey, do you want to register for a, an iPad shuffle? Remember that thing? An iPod oh, shuffle? Yeah. Thing this, thing? this is back in 05. You want to register for this? Chance to win it? Give me your name, phone number, email. So I started building a database of people all over Virginia because people travel to these races. And I would do it over and over and over and got into a system around it and started building my database through that way. There's ways you can do it, it doesn't have to be just on the phone. Get creative, do things that are fun. Whatever your fun part is, if you're uh, really into volunteering with SBCA, get heavily involved in SBCA. Give, 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 and then people will start using it. Show as much as you possibly can. Anyone else have a comment around this? Nope, all right. The six core competencies of a business. Andy, you wanna read these real quick? Yeah, uh, lead generate, mm -hmm. capture and convert to appointments, right. present to buyers and sellers and get a comment, show buyers and market sellers, 
write and negotiate contracts, coordinate the sale to closing, and manage the money. Okay. Is there anything else you should be doing in real estate besides these things? Can you leverage any of these out as your business grows? Yes. Kristen, what can you leverage out? Coordinate the sale to closing. Coordinate the sale, hire TC. Yep. You can do that, right? Transaction coordinator, what else can you leverage out? Showing agents. So the showing agent would be showing buyers and marketing and stuff, but showing buyers are number three, right? Manage the money. You can leverage out managing money. I'm going to challenge you on that one. We're going to set one aside. Okay. okay. Uh, what else can you leverage out? Generation. You can, and I'm going to set that one aside as well because okay. that's going to be a really slippery slope if you do. You can leverage two, oh, let me just point it. Two, three, four, and five. You can build a really big team that can present to buyers and sellers good agreements. They can show buyers and market the sellers. They can write the contracts and they can coordinate the listing according to the seller closure. My suggestion is you never stop doing this. Gary Keller still lead generates to this day. What he lead generates for has changed. Before he used to lead generate for buyers and sellers. Now what does he lead generate for? Business partnerships, talent. So you're always looking for that next piece to grow into. And he ended up leveraging all the generation around buying and selling to a <coughs> team who earned the right to do so. Talking about managing money, Chris. Yeah. You want to delegate managing the money. Mm, to an extent. You ever heard of embezzlement? Yes. But that's why you need checks and balances. Thank you. Yes. You can hire a bookkeeper to help manage your books, right? right? You hire a CPA who is part of your team. You can hire a financial advisor, right. part of your team. But you need to be watching your money on a regular basis mm -hmm. and have a system for what you do with the money and what your plans are. So you guys have heard the uh, 30, 30, 40, maybe you haven't around cost of sale and expenses. You'll learn this as you get into real estate more. Right now, your goal is to find business and put them under contract. As your business grows, you have a plan of how much you're going to invest back into the business, how much money goes to taxes. Do you have separate accounts? These are all things around money that you need to own going forward. Lead generation fears and myths. Kristen, you want to read these? Um, I think lead generation is really difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to lead generate. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid of making mistakes. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got into real estate, I had lead generated by being around people. Like I said, doing events and stuff. I did not get on the phone. It scared the hell out of me. And I hired a coach. He's like, I want you calling two people a day. I wouldn't do it. Because I was afraid that I would come across as a sleazy salesperson. I wasn't thinking that I can actually offer value. I can actually help them. I can be an advisor. You ever heard the book um, by Gary Vanderchuk called Jab, 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 Right Hook? So he was the first uh, really big online business back in the 90s. He had a, his father had a wine store and he put that on the internet and started selling wine like no one's business. And he realized that if I can offer value, offer value, offer value, then I've earned the right to say, hey, who do you know that could help you buy a cell phone? Who do you know about my, my wine? And here he's me. So come at it from a point of offering value as much as you possibly can. Educate them. Hey, you're curious about what the money looks like? Let's talk to my favorite lender. Just talk to them so you can find out what's going on. Are you curious about investment properties? I'm going to put you on a drift so you can see what's out there. And I'll give you a call in a month and just see what's going on. Not pressure, education, advice. So let's add to this. Let's shift our mindset a little bit here. Myrna, you want to read the uh, second half of each of these? I'll read the first part and you read the second half. Okay. I think lead generation is really difficult. What does it say or anything, Myrna? I was confusing effort with enjoyment. Lead generation is actually easy. It's just not fun. No. It can be fun thing what you're doing, but usually yeah. it's not. <laughs> I don't have time to lead generate. I had an issue of making time to lead generate and protecting that time. How many of you are time blocking on your, cal your calendar on your phone right now? I would see on their lead generation, time cultivation, relationship building, whatever you want to call it, I would see on your calendar. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. <laughs> if it's not on your calendar, what's going to happen? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, guys. 
you looked at my calendar, you're going to see it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I already had lead generation for an hour and a half before I got here this morning. You find time to fit it in? How did you do? Oh, no, this was a business meeting with 22 oh. other business owners. Okay. What's the average like for Anthony when you? Set aside an hour. How many calls do you get in in that hour? Uh, so I do two hours, nine to eleven every day, and then Friday is three hours. I can generally get in about. I try to do at least ten DMs on Facebook a day, add five people a day, and then I'll get in about fifteen phone calls and about like twenty text messages throughout that. Anthony, how long been in real estate? Uh, four, four months. Yeah. Habits, guys, it's all habits. Hit your system, put it in your calendar. If you guys, we talked earlier, if you don't have clients, you don't have a business. If everyone, the last thing they put in their calendar is client acquisition, time to grow their business. So please, if I ever come to you and say, Can I see your calendar? I'm doing it out of love. All right, I don't know what to say, Myrna. I had to get on the path of mastering the dialogue skills needed in this business. Right. So scripting. Anthony, do we script? Yes, sir. How oh, twice a week? Twice a week. We practice our we practice it. Guys, you have people in this room you can get together with, get on the calendar and start practicing your dialogues. People, what's the most important injection say? I don't like scripts. Why do people say they don't like scripts? Because they sound salesy. They sound salesy. And why do they sound salesy using a script? Because they don't practice. They don't practice it. So it looks like something they're reading a book. Um, my name is John Pace, and I would like to help you buy or sell a home. <laughs> Versus you internalize it, and it just comes across as a conversational piece. I'm afraid of making mistakes, Myrna. I found that lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks and skills that are well documented. Mm -hmm. Is it all of your day? Yeah. But this small part of your day gives you the opportunity to do the things you got into real estate for, which is helping people and making money. You and all your people. How many people are in your phone right now? Does anyone know? I'm like two people. You have 250 in your phone? It's awesome. Is there a count? I have a Twitter. Sure. Like two. You can scroll to the very bottom of the bottom of the account. For real? Yeah. Andy, how many people do you have in yours? Uh, 827. 827. I have 1499. I need one more today. That's good. <laughs> I got 14,000. Do you really? How many are my sphere? Which phone do you have? Which one? Like, yeah, yeah. One. How many? So I have 14,000 because we've done a lot of lead generation over 17 years. How many, how many people are in my database? Like my, my, my group, my tribe. Oh, you probably have like 50, 60,000? No, 600. What? I focus on the 600 and we market, we do marketing to the other thousands that we have brought on. Okay. The 600 who is I focus on. Yeah. I don't focus on the 14. Make sense? So of the group you have, so Andy says you 800, but I'm curious, of the 800, how many you think like really know you well that would love to hear from you all the time? Probably about 100, 100, 100. There we go. So those are the ones we start with first. All right, do a little math exercise here. So let's say you do have 250 people in your phone. The people you know will hopefully will either refer themselves to you or refer someone they know to you. And one of the benefits of being with Keller Williams is that we've got over 200,000 realtors and we have all the data on what people do. So they build a model. And the model says, that of the people in your database, 0.081 of them will refer themselves to you. And 0.1 or 10% of them, basically 8% will refer themselves and 10% should refer someone else. What's the saying everyone knows at least number of people? Everyone has a span of, you heard this before? No, not six degrees. Oh. It's not a Kevin Bacon conversation. Oh, okay. It's uh, like yeah. how many? The average person knows how many people. I don't know. Two fifty. So when you are talking to your two hundred fifty people, what you're really doing is trying to talk to their two hundred fifty as well. So whatever the two fifty times two fifty is, that's a stupid big number. 
That's what they're going for. So of the 250, you know, 8% of those 250, when you properly talk to them routinely and market to them and keep in communication and relationship, 8% of them should refer themselves, which is 20 closings a year. 10% should refer you, you to someone else they know, that's 25 a year, for a total of 45 closings. Just out of 250 people, a very small database. Now, is that our average commission in Richmond? What's our average here? Nine or 10. So 250 people is not $225,000, like more like 450. Is that a good income? And how do you get to 450? Getting a relationship with people and reminding them what you do and taking good care of them. That's it. We can stop right now. That's the main thing I want you guys to see. And all it is is getting on your calendar two hours a day, whatever it works. For us, it's in the morning because anything in the afternoon. What happens? When do people want to see homes? Afternoon or nights and weekends. Do they ever want to see it at nine or 10 in the morning? Usually. So this is your protected time. This is the most important thing. If you woke up in the morning and had breakfast with your family or friends, what are you doing? Came in and did this and went home. Did you have a good day? You had the best day possible because you're doing this better than 90% of the people who are in the business. Any questions on that? Is this more money than you thought your database would bring? Is that number times two scary one? No, exciting. Is that exciting? Yeah. What can you do with that money? Well, what could you do with $450,000 in a year? Hire a TC. You can hire someone. And why would you want to hire someone? To grow. To grow. But why else would you want to hire someone? Provide better life. service. Provide better service and what's get time back. Get your time back. And what can you do with the time that you get back, Robbie? Do whatever you want to do with it. Like you could. I mean, depending on what you're, you know, what you want to do, right? You can do time with family, right? You time you with family. Could, Use that towards your business. I mean, there's multiple. Do lead generate more? Yeah, I know, right? No, but there's a, depending on what your what your lifestyle is and how you are, you can do whatever you want to do with that time. It's, it, it opens freedom up for you. So I'm hearing you say is that lead generation equals freedom? Yeah. And most people get in the business because they we talked before they did not want to work for somebody else. They wanted the freedom of their own job. Yet the freedom they have chosen doesn't serve them. So if you start time blocking for your day on what's most important, that will equate to freedom on the back end. You don't get freedom by just choosing to be a sole business owner and then do your calendar whatever you want. Then you have no money. With no money, there's no freedom. Money gives you options. What's Gary say? Money is good for the good it can do. What does that mean? I'm going way off topic here with all of this topic. Money is good for the good it can do. Huh? You can give it back. What else can you do with it? Employ people. You can employ people. What else can you do with it? Leo, what can you do with $450,000? Invest it. Yeah. Invest it. You can send your kids to college. You can pay it off your mother's house. You can donate a ton of money to charity. Don't get stuck. I mean, oh, don't get stuck. that's a good number. But 450 is great. What does a million look like? <laughs> and the only way you get there is by talking to those people. That's it. Okay. Your news. All right, aha so far. Is this over your head? Is this resonating? Is this scary? Does it feel right? Someone say something. You said the first thing you said to start that um, destiny kick was you can find answers by the people that's the most important. What else? So do these things up front. It's going to set you up for success in your Yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes. That's a good answer. What else? I'll say something. Looking at that 250 and knowing that you're trying to talk to their 250 and then their 250 and then their 250. Can you do the math for me? Get a front end frame? Yeah. So 250 times 250. 
It is sixty-five thousand people. Six sixty-two thousand five hundred. Sixty-two thousand people. Yeah. So I mean, just knowing that you're talking to that, you know, and trying to, because it's kind of like that conversation. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's about who you know, but it's also about who they know, right? Because even if they're not looking to buy or sell right now, they may know somebody who is. And it's all about finding that willing and able buyer or seller. And why would those people refer you? Because of the relationship that you've, you know, you've kind of had with them either on the front end or whatever. I mean, that's the biggest thing about this industry is it's about relationships. And this is coming from somebody who I'm not licensed. I'm working on getting my license, but on my end of things, it's, you know, building those relationships with people, being able to just have a simple conversation with them. And it may not be, you know, it doesn't have to be about, you know, real estate or anything like that. You can ask about how their family's doing, how the kids are doing, you know, what have you. And just knowing that you care about them on a personal level goes a very, very long way. My goal is to be, thank you, Robbie. My goal is to be the straw that stirs everyone's strength. Mm. So I always tell people, if something comes up and you have a need, yes, you see me as a realtor, but I'm connected with a lot of people. So let me know you need a financial advisor, or you're you're having to put your mother in a nursing home, you need, you need an attorney to help draft everything so they don't get my taxes down the road. You're a great family attorney. If you're going through a divorce, great. I got a, I got a divorce attorney who's phenomenal. I'll look out for your best. I want to be the person that says, Andy, meet Charlene. She can help you. And then what happens down the road? They hear from a friend says, I think about, I need to buy my first house. And they go, that person, Anthony, is really a care of. I should refer him. That's all it is. Give, 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 and then receive. Don't do it, my a friend of mine from college who got his became a financial advisor like 20 years ago, the first phone call. Hey, I'm a financial advisor now. You want to work with me? That was the phone call. And who do you know that I can help? There was no value, no generosity. It was take, 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 take. And that feels like a sleepy sales call, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Right. You all seen this before? Yes. What does it mean? Kind of a funnel or the path that you're closing. <laughs> Gary Keller loves models. Anytime you hear something, you want to make a camp, every, every speaker that you had on stage, they interviewed in advance and took what they did and made a model. They did a little one page of what they do. And so some people it's open houses, some people it's door knocking, some people it's social media, others it's military. Um, God, what are the things that you see? Um, there's models for short sales, expires, foreclosures, FISBOs, model, 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 model. And you pick the model that you think you want to follow. For me, it's my data, it's my spirit. So the idea being that you lead capture, meaning you talk to people, this can also mean you're doing paid per click ads or you're doing Zillow or Facebook ads or those kind of things. But for our conversations, you're talking to people and they say, hey, my friend Susie needs to buy a house. Could you please help them? You add your database. You take those leads. You strengthen those relationships. You cultivate them. And then you go back and recycle all again. It's an ongoing thing. You never get to the point where you stop lead generating. And it, it's always like, in my mind, when I start off, I was like, when I get to here, I can breathe and I can stop doing this thing I hate so much. And I realized that's a, that was a fallacy. There's, there's no way I can stop doing this. I want to say in real estate, I have to. Now, how I lead generate can shift, who I talk to shifts. Like now, now I'm doing a lot of business owners and that kind of thing versus individuals. They have a bigger sphere. Lead generate talent, lead generate people to join the team. I think any top producer, we all realize that at some point, we can't stop generating. Can't. It's a golden handcuffs to some respect. Yeah. I get comfortable with the idea that you just to the day you stop selling caps. Or say you stop your business. Oh, yeah. Retire in Maui. You retire in Maui. And when you're in Maui, can you still regenerate? Yep. And refer all the business back to your best friend in Richmond? There you go. We have a woman on our team uh, who retired and she spends four hours a week, maybe. Doing what she does, doing what she always does, what she calls her friends. And she made $35,000 a year from those last year just for fun. That's all she did. Not a bad business model, four hours a week. No. Hell per hour. Good. Enough. Yeah. 
I calculated my dollar per hour just on lead generation, separately from everything else I do, and it was 4x. You know, $2,000 an hour. So why in the hell would you take lock boxes on a house? I can leverage that yeah. to something else. Right? So if you grow, start looking at, okay, what are the ways I can hire someone who needs an opportunity? It can help me so I can stay in my lane and do my thing better. All right, prospecting and marketing are lead generation activities that deliver leads into your business. Is that it? All right. That was more to that slide. All right. So let me ask you this. Prospecting, what does prospecting mean? I'm sorry? I said reaching out to people. Reaching out to people. Face to face, voice to voice, belly to belly, conversations with people. What is marketing? Automation. Automation. It could also be uh, billboards. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, paid uh, ads in a magazine. Mm -hmm. Marketing is you're trying to get people to call you from usually putting money into something. Prospecting is you doing your hello kind of job. So prospecting has it's time intensive, it's proactive. Does it cost you money to do it? Marketing? No. The prospect. No. It's free. Something the phone you already own, you would own anyway. It takes time, and you get immediate results from at least someone saying, "Hey, it's great to hear from you." I'm glad you called. That's immediate results. You're building that relationship. Whereas marketing, talk to me about that. Marketing free. Ooh, very rare occasions. You can find a way to do some stuff on social media that's a marketing kind of thing. But traditional marketing, you're trying to get lots and lots and lots of people calling you. It, it's a big check. It is passive. You set it and forget it. Wait for the phone to ring. But it takes a long time. So I know a lot of businesses have built their business with marketing on the bottom and prospecting on the top. Mm -hmm. And what do you think happened to them when we crashed in 08? Because why? You're yeah. exactly right, but why? They put that up. <laughs> the phone stopped ringing. They had no relationship with these people. There was no reason for them to call because it was 08. There was 2011 for that matter. And they never built a relationship with people Say, hey, are you stuck with your home? Hey, rather than foreclosure, you ever thought of a short sale where your, for, your credit score will drop for a couple of years and it comes back versus a foreclosure where your credit that will stay in your permanent record forever? They weren't having those conversations before they helped them. So make your business all about this, and then you can have that more time. As you earn money and need more time. Well, here we go. All right, relationship management. A database is a container that holds the information of your leads and contacts. A smart database allows you to have planned and meaningful communication with your database. Who wants to tell me the difference between these two paragraphs? Smart database frees up your time by automation. Okay. Uh, set tasks that Auto email, all the text, things like that. Right. So you can focus on being on the phone. Very good point. So if you have two, you already, everyone has a database, correct? Mm -hmm. Your phone right now has 250, 500, whatever, 800 people in it. That's a database. Does that mean it's going to generate you business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. You got to do something with it. So a smart database, where you are purposeful about it, you have a system to call people. My suggestion is once a quarter. I have some people I call monthly. They like to hear from them. that's their social style. My social style, but I want to hear from them. Like, you need to call and support. So you have a system that says, hey, this week I need to call everyone with the last name starting with A and W. Y'all heard of the DTV2? No. Okay. You will find that soon. So how many weeks are in a year? If you divide by, by four or once a quarter, how many weeks are in a quarter? 13. How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. You take 26 divided by 13, where's that? So you call two last names, two letters each week. 
and every 13 weeks you got through your entire day. And there's a schedule, look it up, called DTT2. I forget what the hell it means. Do the, Do the database two. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so it starts off with the first week is A and W. It's called everyone with the last name of A and W. And then there's PL, there's Y and Z, all the plan. And after 13 weeks, you call your entire database. And what happens the 14th week? They call you back. Now you start all over again. Now the second time around, like I don't always call everyone. Second time around, I might do a text. I might do a voice text or a video text, or I might do a social media, uh, Facebook messenger kind of thing. Uh, yesterday, we automated. I sent out 592 texts with a video in it from our CRM. I did my whole database in an hour. What? A video on your CRM? So our CRM, I think command can do this as well, where you could load in an auto plan. So I loaded in a text. And I took a bomb bomb video and I took that URL and loaded it as well and wrote in there and said, Hey guys, here's proof of loop. Send it out. I touched 500. I already have 35 responses already. Now, here's the thing don't do that right away because I've been building this relationship over 17 years. They already know me. So I'm offering, I'm trying to connect different ways. Yeah. Your job is starting out brand new is it's good to see you again. Yeah. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you guys. It's, it's good to see you well. guys. Yes. In a nice way, you want to be really annoying. In a really nice, giving way. Make sense? So get a system that allows you to be repetitive on. And then don't stop until the day you shut the doors of this. Is D2 or? DTD2. D2, is that a colorism? Yep. Is that? Okay. okay. There's a class on it. Okay. So you can actually join a group. You can join a group about it. Okay. I joined the group for six, 12 months until I felt comfortable with it. Okay. I got to the point where I was calling between 40 and 60 people a day. Okay. Now, I might, over the course of the week, I would talk to probably 30, 40 people. It's a really good system. Yeah. You want to get into a habit, it's probably the best system out there. Let's talk about leads versus contacts. So a lead is what? People who have earned the right to have at least a one-way conversation with. That means it comes into you. Contact, you've had a two-way conversation. What's the, why is it, why do we want to talk about the difference between two? Uh, because the lead is like, you're reaching out to them. Mm -hmm. Um, they're trying to establish that relationship. Correct. Contacts is when the relationship is already established. Yeah, or that lead has says, hey, I want to talk to you. I want to get to know you better. You have something that I need. Let's build a relationship, right? So the reason they bring this up is that you're going to start tracking your numbers eventually. You want to know how many people you dialed a lead, how many people picked up and said, hey, we should talk. Then you figure out your ratio to the number of people you dial versus you get the help. And then you know, hey, if I call 20 people, I'm going to have one relationship. I'm going to have one person saying, hey, I need your help. Once you learn those ratios, then you know, I need to sell more houses, so I know how many phone calls to make today. That was a course of a course. Does that make sense? Ooh, you were listening. I told you I was The ETV2 schedule, guys. So before you leave, make sure you got one of these. That makes sense. So get in the habit now. Like I use my iPad and I just I do chicken scratches on it. I say, okay, today I dialed 25 people, and then what you did, I'll say I talked to four, and then I log it into a system. You know, but now it, and then over time I say, okay, over the course of the year I dialed 2,500 people and I talked to 400. Makes sense. And you start building, and then of the 400, I got 300 referrals. I made 200 appointments. And I had 100 closes. And you can start figuring out your ratios. You can start modeling your business over time. Okay. Relationships must be attended to, cared for, and cultivated. What does that mean? Nurture them like you can after that first one is consuming. Like you said, be the resource, be the go to, be the first to take the bottom and then break something or something. Perfect. So it's consistency. So I'm hearing you say. So what I see most realtors do is they'll make a ton of calls and they get busy, right? You got all these leads. And so what happens to get busy? No calls. 
And I, oh, I got time, but I have no business. Lots of calls. Now I'm really busy, no calls, no business. Yes. So the trick is to smooth things out where you're constantly, even when you're slammed, you find time to make some calls. My coach calls it one oar in the water. One oar in the water. One, rather than rowing two, you're rowing just one, but you're still rowing. You're still rowing, and I'm busy, and now it looks up, and now I'm back to two, row, two oars again, and then I'm back to one oar again. As long as you keep going, just don't stop and miss the catch. All right. Does it have to be just phone calls you make? No. Okay. Who else is doing something on our lead generation they'd love to do or it's really effective? For? Who wants to kind of chime in on that? Texting. You text people a lot? You get good responses from people on that? Yeah. You, have a, you have a good way of communicating over text that doesn't come? Yeah. I've had texts where I say one thing and someone read it the wrong way. Let's so be really careful in how you use things because text does work. Well, it starts in text, but then it goes to like, I get their attention through text. Oh, so interesting. It, and then I'm like, trying to, you know, set up some time and like make it more. So the text is kind of like the gateway drug and then you get a chance to talk. Exactly, yeah. Nice. yeah. Perfect. Who's using social media? Talk to me about that. Um, I don't have a name tag, so I apologize. Felicia. Felicia. Um, social media, at this point, honestly, I'm completely honest with that. Is my passive way of doing it is kind of a, a safety net in a lot of ways, it's a comfort zone. But honestly, it's been successful in the sense of putting out content that isn't by for me. I'm a realtor, but it's more let me tell you about the big housing grant, let me tell you about things that can actually help you and answer that question that was really stopping you from making that phone call and making that consultation. That's wonderful. That's what so you're educating people yes. and giving value yes. without saying, use me, use me, use me. Right. I'm doing the caption, but not. Nice. <laughs> Great. Who writes? Oops, I'm too far. Personal notes. I close. You do that. I just send this one. Yeah, this is one yeah. that I do. You doing it <laughs> consistently? Yeah. So what I do is I like to cold call, and so of those people who, who answer and engage in the conversation with me, yeah. I'll do a handwritten note to say thanks for taking my call. Da, da, da. Then I put my, you know, my information in there. If I'm able to get that email address, then I put them on, like, you know, send them. So why, why do you write the person up? I love that you do it. I'm just curious why. Try to connect and make it more personal mm -hmm. and not just a one-time phone call. So they know that it's, I'm a real person and, you know, just want to make those connections. I love that you do that. Brian Defini is one of the best uh, coaches around relationship building for real estate. And he did a study where they realized if you wrote a handwritten note after a conversation, that phone call becomes seven times more powerful. Yeah, that's the same. That's, that's what I learned. <coughs> I took this. Yeah. I used to, I was coached by him originally in a situation and I switched to coach, but they're, they're phenomenal in this yeah. relationship. So they're really good. You guys ever get handwritten notes at home? I, I never get any. Me I never get any. And if I see one, it's the first thing I open, right? Mm -hmm. You don't open the bills. You don't open the spam. You open the handwritten note. It says, I, I had a great conversation today. I really enjoyed talking with you. Call me to get help. And it's a nice, nice touch. All right. A client referral loop. Your database, your database will generate leads in the form of new repeat or referral business. You get good at doing this over and over and over and over, and then you have consistent business showing up in your life. But the word consistent has to be there. You do it for a quarter, and then you just stop for a quarter, and then you do it for a quarter, and then you just stop for a half a year, and then you do it again for a couple weeks. You can roll a coaster. You can have a really, I had a great March, crappy April and May. Amazing June. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exhausting. All right, put it all together. Lead generation never ends. It's best when time blocked and determines the size of your business. If you lead generated for 30 minutes versus three hours, who thinks it ended up having a bigger business the end of the day? Three hours. For three hours. You reach more people and build more relationships. Yeah. Simple math equation. Yeah. Yes. What do you think is the best time? During the morning, afternoon. Which everyone you're gonna be the best consistency doing it. Okay. My energy is best in the morning. Most people's are. 
getting out of the way to eat with it. Eat the frog first kind of idea. Go and eat it when you're first done, you're the rest of the day, you're the rest of the walk. So for me, it's just that. From a lead standpoint, like if you're doing like Zillow, Realtor.com, pay-per-click stuff, there's some studies out there that say, hey, these days, these times are better. Yeah. But in your database, I'd say calls are effective. As long as you get into a system, that's the most important thing. I would always tell her it's probably best to do it in the morning, like 9 to 11, mm -hmm. and you schedule an appointment later in the day. Right. So if you just be consistent, say, okay, every day to so this time, I'm going to do my cold calls or whatever. And then you schedule those appointments after that. I would agree. That's a good way to do it. That's what I've been trying to be consistent with. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll scout the new agent because they've asked me a little bit of time, and I say, sure. And the first thing we do is they say, show me your calendar. And that's, that's, not, that's not why I'm here. I say, yeah, it is. You just don't want to talk about it. I want to see your calendar. Show me what your business looks like on a weekly basis. And I'll show them mine. I say, this is my business. Before I go into the <coughs> you know I'm going to be here at this time, and you'll see me on the phone. Or you'll see me lead generating in a different way, but I'll be lead generating. All right. Aha, uh -huh. who's got something for me? Consistency, thank you. Can you take anything away from consistency? I don't care if you get consistent calling five people, just do it. I don't care if you only call five people, but call five people there. And then get comfortable going to 10. And then get comfortable going to 20. What I want to see you just starting out your business, whether you're new, is I want to see on a daily basis that you're building the habit of doing this because the first first month sucks. It's the hardest thing. It's hard. First year, hard too. But after after two months or so, they're like, I get to the point if I don't do it, I get, I get major panic attacks and guilt. I feel it. Like I know I should be doing this, and I'm not. Why am I not doing this? You want to get to the point where your your inner voice is telling you you're an idiot. Get back in. All right, give me some more ahas. Be nice and be annoying. Or uh, you can say another way. You also say you speak consistent. Yeah. Keep growing, yes. but you have to grow with your Yes. People want to run a lot. If you're super busy, find a way to squeeze in a few phone calls. Yeah. On the way to an appointment, on the way from an appointment, you can find time to call people. There's always a way to do it. Anything else? And I'm being way too passive. Mm, I mean, way too passive, yeah. waiting for the phone to ring versus yeah. making it ring. Yes, yeah. and then and, and the the idea of the I guess the, the roller coaster of you're doing great and you're making the calls, you're doing you're you're seeing the success, and then all of a sudden all those closed, and you didn't lead generate while you had those clients, and then you had this huge drop, and you're thinking yeah. it's you, it's not you, it's well, it's, it's you in the sense that you're following <laughs> the model, you're not sleeping that. Yeah, it's just yeah. you weren't following the consistency. You know, so that's it's not Felicia's real, so it's just not on the model, it's just on the model. Felicia got successful because what she did, and then she stopped listening to what she just did. Exactly. That's really good. Thank you for sharing that. All right, your sphere. What is this slide showing? <laughs> what was that? Everyday life. Everyday life, and in everyday life, there are what? Interactions, which can lead to opportunities. opportunities. Once again, don't turn every conversation to real estate, please. But there are always ways to provide value. There's always ways to listen and build relationships. All right, so about categorizing your sphere. Immediate family, friends, relatives, neighbors, past coworkers, hobby or sports groups, teachers, Worship, club, volunteer, professional services, financial, legal, professional services, home, auto services, real estate, other real estate agents. How many realtors are in the country? 1.6 million. 1.6 million. Do you right. think they might know someone who wants to move to Richmond one day? They might. Real estate services, how about ancillary, like lenders, attorneys, home warranty, relationship with those people, and other. My suggestion is pick two or three and get really, really granular and deep with those three. Or pick one to start and get after that group. 
most people, when I when someone joins our team, I say, okay, write down every single person you know. And who do you, who do you think they write down? Yeah. People they like. Um, <laughs> they don't write people, everyone they know. And usually I can give them to double their database by saying, I want you to write down everyone you know. Does your kid go to daycare? Who's the one that greets you at the front desk? Who's the teacher that your kid sits with? Who's the doctor? <coughs> Who's the pharmacist? Guys, your, your database is huge if you really let yourself stretch on who you're available to talk to, who you talk to on a regular basis. And over time, you can build a relationship and offer value. We usually say, it's my mom, it's my dad, it's my family, and it's my best friends. I know 35 people. <laughs> Everyone knows at least 250. I'd say most people know a thousand. Does that give anyone heart pains? Make you nervous? I guarantee you no. Know. The question is, do you have the patience to get in a relationship with them? That's the hardest part of that first phone call. Or the first hint of saying something that because the salesperson, how do I say this right? Yeah, that's my issue. I, I have a lot of people in my phone. Right? Good. Um, I'm a respiratory therapist also, but I worked at the. Do you smoke? Farm. No, I don't. Good. I want you to therapist to smoke. I don't understand I'm that. I'm a respiratory therapist. Yeah. I don't Sidebar, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. I used to work in a hospital. I always noticed that. Like crazy. Like, this is not smoke. It's not like smoke. Yeah. 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 Watching their patients <laughs> die from lung yeah. cancer. So I know a lot of doctors and nurses. And I have people in my phone, and it's like I haven't talked to them in a while. Mm -hmm. And it's like I want to call, but I don't know how to engage the conversation without sounding like too salesy. Like, yeah, I'm going to take sales. Mm -hmm. What's your business? So, one thing I started doing that helped me get over the hump was if I had a listing or a buyer, I would call people and ask for help. Hey, my, my, Client Susie is looking for her first house. It's so competitive. She wants to be in 23227, the Northside area. Do you know anyone that is thinking of someone that I could help put in touch with Susie in touch with? It's not about me, not my client. Okay. Or I just listed a home at 123 Main Street and we're looking for the right buyer for this home. Do you know anyone who might be interested in this home? I'm not asking you to abuse me. I'm saying, who do you know that can help my client? And that phone call usually gets me over the hump where I can then circle back and say, hey, by the way, thanks again for sending me that person. It didn't work out with them for that house, but I put them in touch with something else. You know, getting that, you can you can mm -hmm. weave it back into a conversation. But for me, it's the I have a person who needs help call. Gets me over the hump on all those relationship calls. Well, that also resonates your professionalism mm -hmm. for your clients. How many phone calls are they getting from realtors asking for help versus asking for themselves? Right. If they call at all. So immediately they think, I'm going to put my house on the market. Oh, that's right. Kristen called me. She was actually a professional. She's doing her job. No one else is doing their job, but she is. I'm going to give her a call. I swear to God, it works really well. Let's try that one with your doctor, with people relationships, you know, okay. and just say, hey, I have a client who has a need. Do you know someone who could help me? Okay. Yes. I have a question about, because I do this quite a few phone calls from, um, my sphere that's looking for rental property. Yeah. And I have no idea of who does rental property. Uh, very few people. And most rental properties only do their own properties. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in DC or New York, that's a business. Richmond is not a business. Mm -hmm. So I tell everyone, I say, I'm really glad you called. Um, I help people with buying and selling homes. Um, when I get phone calls like these, um, my suggestion would be, you can go on to Times Dispatch, you can go on whatever website, Zillow, whatever you want to say. The, the, usually you find rental homes there. If you find something you like and you want to give me a call to kind of vet it for you, I'm happy to answer any questions you have on it. I give them the homework. If they see a property, then give me a call and I can say, ah, you know, why, why do you think about this area? Tell me more about why you put this home. You can help them that way. But don't become the person who's showing them rental homes. Yeah. It's 100 bucks a pop if you're lucky. You can also send them to ask for the company. There you go. Oh, you need to give me a Yeah, see, maybe she has the, the one company out there who's actually proactively helping people. Yeah. Because I do what you what you just said, except I don't tell them to come back to me. I do that. I always tell I them to come back and say, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And most don't take me up on it, but a few do. And I'll look at the list and say, okay, so do you know this area has this, this, and this? Or 
Have you looked at the crime reports from the police department to double yeah. check what you're looking for? Because this is a fairly waste of time. They'll waste a lot of your time. So, yeah. Correct. All right. Any other thoughts on this? Categorizing your sphere. Why would we want to categorize your sphere? Because the most time with the move that Yep. The Feeney does A, B, and C clients, and then he also has Fs. Oh. Yeah. What would be an F person? Someone you never want to call. I have people I delete from my database. I'm not using, I'm not working with you ever again. That's okay. We don't have the right relationship. Can I just say organizing them in your phone? I just started doing that. In your phone? Interesting. Yes. And in your contact list. Did not know you could do that. So, well, it's just the contact. So, if it's an agent, it says A semicolon the agent's name ah. and the company they're with. If it's a financial person, it says F semicolon the financial person and the company they're with. Interesting. So it comes up, and then you can group them together. I just learned all that, so I've been working on it. That's fun. So we do that inside of our CRM. Yes. We'll have SOI. We'll have businesses, and then within the businesses, I'll say plumber, electrician, financial, blah, 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 blah. But on your contact list, because 1,500 people, most of the time I know it's called. Yes. But it helps identify, especially like the vendors, it helps identify that they're a vendor or the company and it's a service call. So let's say you've got, thank you for sharing that, Julie. Let's say you've got someone who has sent you five pieces of business. Would you want them to stand out in your database? Yes. Dollar How signs. would you do that? Dollar signs. VIP. You could put dollar signs on them. <laughs> VIP group. You can tag them in your system as VIP. Go out of your way to make sure the people who are really taking care of you, you take care of them. My suggestion is put VIP or something like that on them. Create a separate group for them and pour into those people regularly. Yeah. Those ones I call the most. I will not forget to call them. If I run out of time, the one ore in the water is the VIP. So, all right. So now in the in the stage where I'm going through my database and kind of filtering them, not just deleting people, but trying to put them into tags, okay. so I could smart plans and all the other things. What do you think are? I know it's individual and it's unique, but what do you think are the basic tag tags that every CRM should have? The basic ones would be, I would put SOI for everyone who is your sphere of influence okay. or other or whatever acronym you prefer to use. That's the most important one. And if they, if they have a business, tag with it what their business is. Okay. Are they a plumber, electrician, financial advisor, whatever? So you really be. have a tag plumber. Yeah. Okay. So is SOI your 600? I sphere. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I would tag them if, if like, I think command, if I remember correctly, we use really, no, we're, yeah. we're going to switch over eventually. Uh, I think command, you can actually put the source where they came from. Yes. So put the source. That's Is it really weird big. that I'm breaking up my sphere to like, I really know you? Like, if I told you, like, hey, baby, versus you're my friend's friend. You kind of That's fine as long as you don't use it as a filter not to call. Some people will say that's my scary list and I'm not going to call them because I don't know them as well as the other list. Yeah. And you, and you stop calling. The whole point of DTD2 is to literally put your whole database in there and call everyone, regardless of who they are. It's kind of a, a necessary tag to say. I think so. I, my fear is that you're starting to become your own thing. Yeah. 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 Ye
Perspective. perspective. Yeah, let's elaborate more on that. It's a really good answer. It is perspective. You could tie something in about lead generation to affirmation. Doesn't have to be well, lead generation. Lead generation makes me wealthy. Lead generation, I'm helping people. Lead generate, whatever it might be that fills your cup a little more, that you actually take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do it, I'm gonna get my job done for the day. Put the script on yourself a little bit versus it's so scary when I call people or they don't want to talk to me. All right, aha so far. I'm sorry? Consistency. It is consistency. And I would also add, don't group people based on who you want to call versus who you don't want to call. You're missing opportunities, guys. You're really missing opportunities. Because it might be a person there who actually needs help and they really need help. And they get picked up by somebody else who sucks at real estate. More importantly, it might be a real estate for they're not a good person. 90%. Yeah. <laughs> I called a person who went to my website. And I was like nervous yesterday. I was like, no, oh, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> and I called her and she's like, oh my God, thank you for calling. So we're gonna unconnect. <laughs> but I was just nervous. And then, you know, sometimes people put in their information, but they don't actually put the right information. So she put my face there. And I was like, this is a little woman. Mm -hmm. So when she danced, I was like, hey, how are you? This is Brian Lindbergh. And then she was like, like, I saw that you were on my site, you know, you were looking for homes, you know, kind of what you guys speed up. She's like, oh yeah. And so I was like, what is your name? <laughs> so I was able to get her name yeah. and she was thankful. And so she was like, yes, I would love to connect with you. So I mean, everyone in this room, I guarantee has gone on an online form and clicked that information, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get that question, is this your real name? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. We know it's not an offensive question. Yeah. But it was the right phone number. So I was like, okay. I'm getting yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they have the wrong phone number. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what other odds we have so far? Could be anything to talk about so far? I can turn this ship around just through lead generation. The one thing that I have just literally have never done. You can build a billion dollar business just on this topic. There are three companies in Keller Williams that aren't kept it. They're with Keller Williams, so they're not corporate, that have valuations over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. A billion, a realtor. I met them. Hmm? I met them. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's impressive. All right. Expand your SOI. That's like fun. Add more personal information to your contacts. Why would we want to do that? Can you call someone you can speak to the last conversation or? You know, their son's birthday was yesterday or whatever. It just makes you know, makes the conversation more personal, makes you more of a person, and people will move you. I'm really glad to say that every phone call I have, I document my conversation. So that when I call the next time, by the way, how was the birthday for Bobby? Or how was Bobby's surgery? Well, yeah. I remember. Yeah. You build relationships. It, I always catch myself, that doesn't matter. I'm like, no, 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 type it in. Because again, you're not. I was like, I'll remember in three months. I'll remember. I got this. No, we're not going. To. Yes. So we have all your database. You don't mix nobody's name up because I kind of have an added to that. You know. Well, that's the, the CRM told me to call, so it's like, hey, John. <laughs> so that's why you say put it in there. It won't, it won't mess yeah. you up. If you're going organic through your own brain, you have your chance to really screw it up. What well, What I started doing more is not just throwing up. When I'm talking to them, I'm I'm, laying, I'm sitting back and I'm just listening to the conversation. Just have because most of the time, like when you knew, you just want, hey, my name's Harry Leeper, I'm this, that, and that, but you don't give them the opportunity to tell you what they're looking for and what they want. And so now what I'm doing, I'm like, okay, tell me a little bit about yourself or what are your goals. 
And then people just start talking. So now I know about their husband, I know about their kids, their birthdays. And I never really took the time to do it that way. And when I'm talking to them now, I'm taking notes. And then I make sure I get their email address and their home address. And then I can put them in my database. But before I was just so excited to get them on the phone, I wouldn't really connect all the information. And it is helpful, especially when you want to send out a happy birthday email or something to that effect. When you're having a conversation with someone, how I phrase they will feel like it was an amazing conversation if what happens. If you allow them to talk. If they talk. They want to be heard. Let them talk. You you do 10 to 20% of talking, and they do 80% of talking. Yeah. Let them talk. Let them hear them. Yeah, it works. You were going to say something. Oh, well, it's actually not just, I mean, every, every, every different presentation, birthdays, and like that. Birthdays are in there. Yeah. Pets. Kids' names, their spouse. That's an important one. This is. Yeah. Uh, make sure you get their address. Why do you want their address? So mail them handwritten cards. Well, mail handwritten cards. Eventually, how often do people move? Every seven years, three to five years. No, but you're military. Yeah. That's like every 18 months to two years. Every seven years? Huh? Every seven years? It used to be seven, it's pushing closer to ten. Really? Yeah. Okay. People are getting a little more stable or whatever. It could be kind of oh wait, what there's a lot of just like I'm gonna stay working yeah. going on. Um there's also a lot of people stay with our because they can't get over the idea I have a 2.5 as a yeah. and I'm buying it six. Right. I'm like, yes, you are. Why should you do that? Because this makes sense for you and your family. Financially it makes sense. Don't go home with the interest rate, it hung with the pain. Monthly payments based upon interest rate and price, taxes, insurance, all that layers in together. Get as much information as you can for them. The reason you get their address is in command, you can do what with their address? Market report. Thank you. You can send a market report on their house. You can put their address in, pull their neighborhood up, and you'll send them a home every, every two months or two weeks or once a month. You can send them an update on what their neighborhood is doing. Is, so when you send that market report to somebody, what are you really doing? Are you sending information about yourself or sending information to them about them? And what do they care about? Sales, as they should. They don't care that you're the greatest salesperson since. They want information that helps them get through where their goals are at the end of the day. So the market report is a huge idea. We talked before about prospecting and marketing. That's a marketing piece. Send to your people that you're prospecting, get that out. If you're not doing it, everyone in your database should have that market report going for every single person, whether you know them or not. Just ask. Just ask questions. Hey, what's your address? Why do you want to know that? Because I have some great information on your neighborhood that I'd like to see. I'll send it out to you. If you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. Okay. Strengthen casual connections. This is where people get kind of hung up. It's the soccer field, it's the playground, it's your doctor, it's the person you used to work with at your last job, whatever it might be. Start layering over time as a relationship. Join groups that will connect you with people with similar interests and values. Right? Who is, who's in a group that does this? Kristen, what you got? Um, the women's council realtors. Women council um, realtors. Also the military affiliation. That's huge right there. Yeah. Um, and then each of the girls went out and were trying to blanket the community and all be in different arenas mm -hmm. so we don't cross. That's right. Is anyone a member of a group in town, like a chamber of commerce or something like that? Yeah. You are? Mm -hmm. I'm in a business network. Have you ever heard of you heard of BNI? I want to do that. Yeah. So there's, I have, there's 24 business owners with me meet every Wednesday at 7:30 in a.m. and we do the exact same meeting every single week, and it brings in $100,000 to my business every year. So that's why you wear this one. Mm -hmm. I don't miss that meeting. I hate getting up and going to that stupid meeting every week, but I will not miss it because that's $100,000 guaranteed my company to go. Because I've been building that relationship for 13 years. Going every Wednesday morning for 13 years. Consistency. 
You could join SPCA. You could join, God, there's a million things you could do. Like I said, I was in the triathlon world. I coached for them. I actually did stuff for them for free, a ton of stuff. And it was showing up. Here's a fun thing. A lot of people say, I'm going to join the triathlon club and start sponsoring. They actually never showed up. Like they would come to the event, but they would do an event once a quarter. I would see these people every single weekend and at a minimum every weekend, if not twice a week. Because if they did a swim, a bike, or run event going on, I would show up to all of them so they knew me. Yeah. And once I got out of triathlons, I stopped doing the sponsorship license. It, it became about the money only. There was no relationship anymore. That makes sense? People knew it. People could say, hey, this person showed up today because all they want is my money. They're not here to help. So the relationship, the groups you get involved in, you're really, if you're really giving and giving these groups, you can be a really great source of this. You get a funny look in your face like I'm saying something weird. You sure we're good? Okay. You're just studying things? Yeah. Who else is in a group that's been really good and beneficial financially for their business? PJ is awesome. I just joined. You joined the PJ? Perfect. I just started going to. Now run a committee. Go run a committee and type a PJ. Yep. Get to know those people and really run it. And then be like, oh, yeah, she's great. She puts much time in this. It's easier for a real person. My uh, summer pool called and said, you want to put a banner on a tennis court? Oh, I just made what they want to use yesterday. I don't, I don't put in relationship for tennis. Find things that you really enjoy and get those relationships. All right, referrals. What does that mean? Let's find the slide. Where can you get referrals from? Anywhere. Anywhere. Let's be a little more specific. It's a very good answer. Where else do you get referrals? Past clients. Past clients. Have y'all heard of the promise script? Look it up. Um, Hicks, John Hicks, John Hicks, Hicks Anderson, Anderson Hicks Group does it. They're the ones who invented it. They, when they sit down with a the client, they have a script around setting up expectations on how they're going to take care of their client. And if I do a great job and have earned the right, I expect you to give me referrals. But it's a win win by the way I just said it sounds very boring. I know, I was like, oh, well, 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 listen to it. <laughs> listen to the way it's done. If you do it the right way, we script, we script this regularly in our team, it works really well. I'm going to give you as much value as possible. And if I give you a five star experience, you do two things. Yeah, sure. First one is you're going to give me a five star give me a five star referral. I would love an, a five star review online. Sure, no problem. And between now and closing, the second thing is, I guarantee you're going to come across someone who's thinking of real estate. When you buy a car, do you see that car everywhere? Mm -hmm. When you're in real estate, you find real estate conversations that will happen to your clients. So when you come across that, I'm looking for people who are as amazing as you are, would you refer me to them? Sure. Always for the flattery consumer. Smiles. 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 So look up, look up the uh, promise script by Anderson Hicks. And that's a great way to get referrals from your clients you're working with. You can get referrals from realtors all across the country. It doesn't have to be just a KW. I've got several hundred in my database that I market to retouch it regularly. Who else can you get referrals? Family, friends. Family and friends. Your mother should be referring you regularly. If you build the relationship, I know there are some people who've gotten really aggressive on it, and I would this is not my style, but I know like uh, Gene Rivers, I think he did this, he would walk in and find the manager and say, I've been coming to your store for five years, I love this, it's fantastic, you've done a great job managing the store. Um, by the way, have you come across anyone I could help? I, was, I would never do that, but for him, he was like, I am your repeat customer. I'm always here. And you know someone I should be talking to. There are people who do it really bluntly. It sounds that works, sounds it doesn't. It's whatever your comfort level is. All right. All right. Got a leads from your sphere of influence. I am building my business on people I know and the people they know. Do you know of anyone, family or friends, or in your neighborhood or group who belong to you belong to who's thinking of buying and selling a home or investing in real estate? 
I'd be pleased to be resourced for this. It's a script. If you hear someone through real estate need, which you be in mind, let me know right away. When would you say this to somebody? Would this be the first phone call you make? No. I mean, you could. My suggestion is this is after you've had three or four phone calls and building that relationship. Oh, by the way, I'm building my business. That's someone I should be talking to. Who do you know that I should know? But my, my personal opinion is you have to earn the right to ask this question. It's a really good script. Especially for other business owners who get it. I would, before I would do this, my conversation with them would be as, who do I know that I should introduce to you that would help you build your business? And ask them that question. Who do you think is in my world that you would want to know? If you're helping them grow, when you ask them this question, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 no problem at all. Let me think. Uh, uh, business owners get it. They really get it. But offer first. Offer a few times and ask for it. Make sense? Yes. Everyone get the picture? I think it's in the manual, too. If you had it. I couldn't find it. No, it's not in there. It's not? No, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Okay. And practice this on your friends first. Everybody here should have a script partner. You all should get together, find your best friend, find a friend, whoever. Hold hands first next to you. So we're going to start practicing weekly. Hold hands. We're going to start scripting together. You can hold hands if you want to do it that way, but I wouldn't say it's a real, real world practice in the day. All right, ahas on this section. Give me something. One thing, whenever we were talking about um, just getting like, the extra information um, that kind of popped up into my head, I was like, well, how do I go about asking for someone's address? And then you went to the next slide, that's why I didn't ask. So I was like, just ask. And I was like, okay. Um, but I didn't realize kind of how easy it was if you already have a relationship and conversations that I've already had. So um, just like, for instance, the head chef at my job. Um, he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about renting. I was like, well, maybe I'll just ask if he wants to ever buy mine. And he was like, yeah, I actually really want to buy it. I just saw it right now. It's just going to rent. And I was just like, dude, I've been working with him for two months. He had no idea of like anything else that I did. So I was just like, actually taking the time to have that conversation and say, aren't you trusted? Um, and then just kind of like, you never know where people are going to come from. My third grade teacher just reached out to me for a career day. So now I have the chance to not only like teach people because I might career, I need my career. Um, and I can also set up something for like my old teachers because they all remember me, they all love me. So that's awesome. Kind of that's great. Yeah, that's, cool. yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Just have conversations. Just ask questions. Everybody you come in contact with should know the group. Yeah. Everybody. There's someone who used to, when I first got in, they had a guy with a instructor. He said, Don't be a secret agent. Yeah. Right. Don't hide it. You could also, I think you can go over the top on it personally, but don't hide it. Anything else? Okay. Lead gen best practices. All right. Here we're getting this fun stuff here. Tracking your lead sources, audit your lead sources, diversify your database, and then we've said something before over and over again, be consistent. Why would we want to track, audit, and then diversify? know where we need to make the adjustments. Especially if you're putting a lot of time into an area that's not working. Okay. Or you're doing an area that's really working, you want to double down or triple down on it. Right? Let's see what we have in here. All right. Time block. We talk about this. What does prepare me? So yes, and for me, it's like had I tagged everyone so I knew who to call this week. Most realtors will say, I gotta call five people and they'll go to the easiest five people they can find because it's the same person they called two weeks ago. So if you have a system that says this week you're gonna call T and J, you call all the last names of T and start with T and J, you're prepared. When you first started making phone calls before you were really confident at efficient game, did you have a script that you followed or more of kind of God, this is so long ago? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I I believe my coach was just trying to get me on the phone 
And I think that was part of the problem was that coaching company I had was not the best. Okay. And so it wasn't the, hey, do you have a client that you could you know, showcase to the person you're calling, for example? You know, mm -hmm. I have a buyer with me, I have a seller who has me, mm -hmm. kind of conversation. Um, but now in hindsight, do you think it makes sense to have a script or more just particular? At a top point. point. Okay, right. So it could also be, hey, did you see that the rates went up a half a point? Yeah. More importantly, did you see where they're forecasting next year they're going to go down to mid fours? Is that true? That's what they're forecasting. Oh, so, so why would that be a conversation? So here's the interesting point. Why would you want to say that now? Because most people in my mind are going to say, well, I'll just wait to buy next year. Why would you want to say to somebody you should buy now and interest rates be lower next year? Why would you say it? You can refinance. Buy the house at a lower value. What's going to happen when the rates drop a point or a point and a half? Everyone's going to come back in. And when that happens, what happens? Prices go up, inspections get waived, appraisals get waived. So the conversation could be, hey, why don't you look at buying a house now where the competition's low? And when the rates do drop, then we'll go ahead and refinance you then. And that way you're, you're buying the price, maybe at less price, versus you waiting and you're having to pay 50000 over to get the house. Make sense? So you could, you could pick a topic. Yeah. And that's your book. Every call you make for that month is on that topic. Or on that article, or on that whatever you're trying to get out. Yeah. Once again, you're offering value, education, whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. My first coach was like, "You just gotta ask for business, ask for referrals." My coach is done. All right, take action, have those conversations, and maintain. Your database is a living document. It is not static. You don't put someone in, and they're in there, and you're done with them. Add their family members. Add addresses. Add if they. Holy my command is you can send a market report for anywhere in the country. Do you have a vacation home? Well, you got two. All right, what are those addresses? And you can send market reports on those properties. Some really cool things you can do. I have my parents set up for their places all across the country. My parents refer me yet? They're in a different market, but no, they haven't. That's my point being that get ready, make the calls, and update your, update your stuff. Every quarter you should be adding to those people. All right, who's stuck on this? Who's having an anger or something on this? Who's having a panic attack? No, I think, I mean, if anything, but the suggestion that's a given, I just think it makes, I mean, it's all, it could be a little bit there, right, when we first start with anything, right? But just the idea of, of what you interest as topics, that's, that's awesome. It just makes me feel like if, if you were to call me with that, I would be interested in talking about it. That's fascinating. Yeah. For me, it's the first two or three phone calls are the hardest, and you get the routine. It just goes. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Every day, the first two or three phone calls are the hardest. Yes, ma'am. I do have a quick question. So, when they come to you, what can you do for the phone call, right? Let's say you're taking calls at any Do you prepare 15 to 30 minutes before maybe you want to script, role play? Not anymore. I literally just get my call. I already know what my topic's going to be for the day yeah. or for the, uh, for the quarter sometimes. And it might adjust as we go through the quarter, but I already know my topic. It's just mm -hmm. got to get, get the, all the call steps and start dialing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't overthink it. What usually happens when you prepare, 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 and then an hour and a half later, like, oh, I got 10 minutes, so I got my call for you. Absolutely. I have 15 lists of things I'm going to do. Yes. Right just pick the day and phone and start talking. Yes. And if done right, let them talk, and then that's what we do before the conversation goes. Mm -hmm. Battle distractions. Build a bunker. What does that mean? Put a sign on your door. I'm lead generating. Leave me alone. Because the people that come to see you are the ones who are not doing what? No, all right. <laughs> Store provisions, meaning if you need to have water or snacks, you don't get up wow. and use that as an excuse to come in here and something in your calls. Sweep for mines. Distractions. Distractions. What? Well, yes, yes. Or the, thank you. So your notification pops up right. on your phone. <gasps> oh, yeah. You got out of your system. You stopped that call and you went to look at notification. Turn all that crap off. Don't look at your email. And the support, if you have people either that you are scripting with or people on your team, hey, I'm going to forward my phone to you. Anyone who calls is going to go to my system. You handle my calls so I can stay in the zone of making outward dots. 
find ways to get people to help you so you stay in your zone. Whether it's 30 minutes, hour, two hours, three hours, whatever your time block is, lock it in and stay at that point. Okay. Now, sometimes for me, if I have a long one, like two hour, at the hour point, I say, you've got five minutes, I'll use the bathroom, get fresh water, go out back in again. I need a mental break. Yeah. Yeah. I got to just clear my head. Yeah. But don't use that every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. What if I have a weak bladder? What was that? <laughs> a weak bladder? Well, be careful, be careful of your provisions. You don't have so much water in there, right? All right. Aha's uh -huh, on this, guys? Just do it. Do it and be consistent. Yeah. Get out of your own head, get out of your own way, yeah. put it on your calendar, make your topic. Yeah. All right. Aha is too cheap. And how is your thinking? Have you guys thinking changed at all this morning? Yes. So give me okay. give me one way your thinking has changed. Yes. So kind of like the hour point today, so saying like, oh my gosh, I have to call this person. Um, it's more like what Patrice says all the time. I get to call them. So it's more of a positive than, oh my gosh, I'm scared. Yeah, great. Well, so she said, like, it's like changing that, you know, the verb is just like, oh, I'm client caught to reading, or I'm coming to, you know, offer you a service, like, do you need something? Like, versus looking at it as like a generation. Because it's really all in the And are you going to find people who say no? Yes. Good. Your, your database, your job's got easier. You're one less person to call. Yeah. I actually have someone else I, I work with right now. That's great. That ever changes, let me know. Have a good day. All right. What do you feel differently about? Anything on that? My move on making calls. Like instead of getting like with the burden, you know, just changing my mindset it was a little bit different. And more so not how they can help you, but how I can work with you. You know, how I can be like a resource to the people I'm reaching out to. You know. If done right, when you finish your lead generation period, you should walk out feeling really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's like, I had I had some really meaningful conversations with people. It sucked, but it was fun. Does that make sense? Yeah. I do feel the most accomplished when I have, like, even though, so when, when I do make calls with me, I mean, like, if I only have two very recent nurturing conversations, I feel accomplished for the group. Even though, like, I call 15 people and, no, you know, two of them hung up, one of them cuts me out. <laughs> but if I get to two very good conversations every day, then I do feel like I did something. If you haven't talked to at least one person in your day about real estate, you're not doing your job. You have not moved the needle forward in any shape or fashion. All right. And uh, so any uh, actions you guys are going to take on different behaviors from when you came in this morning? Absolutely. Give me one. When you were talking about the idea when you meet with a new agent and you say the first thing is that you sit down. Yeah. If you were looking at my calendar right now, it's right back in my office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. So that's when we leave this is the very first thing. And on that, please only add a few things. Just in the morning, leave your open afternoon light open. So usually I see the biggest mistake is that you don't in your calendar. Your second biggest mistake is that everyone time blocks the whole damn day. That's what I was doing. Don't do stop. No, please stop. I'll tell you what. Hold on. Let's try to get in here. So when you time block your entire day, what what is it? So a lot of people who get in for freedom, what does a time blocked week look like for them? Hell. Yeah, yeah. I have no I, I have nowhere to go. I have no I, I'm confined. So if you can confine a section of your day that you regulate this part here, and this part is open to I call it fixing the message that you create in the morning. Oh. And message being a good thing. Oh, I have a buyer appointment, I have a seller appointment, I gotta show homes. With my right contract, those are things that go in the afternoon and it's going as they come along. Because for me, it's like I see my whole calendar block. I, I, I have a nine to five job again. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It feels that way to me. It, yes, absolutely. And I thought to myself that it was a way of serving the idea of you wasting time, but it really does feel very heavy and very negative. Yeah, especially when I can first, the first thing I need to do in the morning is my time. 
And then based, you know, like it's color coded, or you know, I got this color for that the Prettiest calendar in the room. Yeah, sure. yeah, but then when I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much on there. Where do I start? Yeah, yeah. Like, where do I start? I mean, I'm gonna find it at the top, but it's like it's gonna be a Consider long backing off as much as you're doing. Yeah. Focus on the morning and let the afternoon figure itself out. Yeah. You can add things. Oh, I got to do this today. Great. I'll put it to a fund. There you go. I get this tomorrow at three. You add it in. Make sense. Any tools you guys are gonna do differently? Or add to what you're doing? My CRM okay. Improve your CRM. Yeah. I love it. Anything else? We're going to change up the topics and tags I have in for me. I, I like that tip that you did. That's a great idea. Don't, don't start doing that in replace of lead generation. It's lead gen time. Oh, my tags aren't right. Well, let me do those first. Are you in my brain right now? My brain's your brain. Let me do those first, and then I'll have what I need, and then I can call. Good plan, John. But as you call them, oh, you can just change the tag. Thank you. So whenever I go into my system, I'm, I always look over the as I'm talking to somebody, I do a quick scan of what's on the page. Do I have an email, an address, phone number? And I'm making notes. I'll just double check those things. For brevity the market reports, I can see if they're opening them. And if they're not, I can then say, hey, by the way, you can remember at your house. I am. Have you ever opened one? No. Be a favorite is open one. I'll make a note. Next time you call, ask the open one. You might find some really good data in there. I'd love your feedback because we're always improving our system. We're not. I have no control of it. We're always improving our system. Can you give me some feedback on it? Sure. Next time you call, did you open the thing? I can see if they opened it twice. So you can use that as a feedback. Just do a quick glance. That's a brilliant point you brought up. Thank you very much. And I think command posts are they open it too. I just don't know where it is. Um, I don't know it quite yet. Yeah. Right. Hopefully they do because that's really helpful information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on. Uh, I got hung up last time. I remember. Success system. All right. How are we on time, by the way? 10:40. It's 10:40. Yeah. Dear God, people. All right. We are way behind. All right. You all see this report? Daily success. Yep. Yep. 10 conversations, 10 contacts added, 10 handwritten notes, 10 five social media, 10 five one social media data enrichments. Yep. This is your habit. Great. Use that. Monday. Use that. Do not use the do not call list, please. It's expensive. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. What is this? What is this called? It's an affirmation. Oh, I mean affirmation. Yeah. You say it every day. This would be something you spend. You could say this before every time you get on the phone. It's 8.59. You say this to yourself two or three times. You start making your jobs. I've seen some people actually put a mirror in front of them and what they make sure they smile when they're talking. Why would you want to do that? You can hear it. You can hear it. It comes through. Versus this. They did. My son does it. They did. <laughs> wow. All right. We don't have time to role play. We gotta get through two classes, right? Um, is, who here has a script partner? If you do not get one, please, 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 please start practicing each other. You're not practicing our clients. You can check. Hey, I have an I have an idea. I'm gonna do this topic. Can I run this by you? What has it sound? That sounded great. You might want to change this right here. Thank you for the feedback. Great. Now you know what it sounds like. Versus what I do is like the first three or four clients I call, they're my script practice partners. They just didn't know it. And then the script got better as I went along. My question is, I don't recommend do you doing that. Solely script practice with I'd recommend it that way. And you can use your best friend, but they're not gonna get what you're trying to accomplish. You could. My wife, every now and then I'll say, I'm sending this text out, what do you think? I'll get her feedback on it. One thing that I did with my best friend, she just recently bought a house, and we went through the whole process. And as we're going through certain parts, I would ask her, "Were you completely clear on that? Like, was there something that I could have given you or said to you, or that would have made that particular step or you know more comfortable for you?" And that was helpful when I was like building out my buyer process. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, prepare your conversation list. The DDD two, have your tags, or however you want to do it. Know who you're going to call for the week. And then lead generation, we're not doing that now. Update your contacts, put notes in your system. 
please, please, please document, document, so you can refer to things when you call them again. And celebrate it. Please celebrate. I suck at celebrating. I'll sell a home like next. Yeah. Come on, just enjoy it. You guys work your butt off. You got you got your client across the finish line. Celebrate it. Or you set an appointment, celebrate it. And that you gotta be careful because that will come across in a phone call. Right. That that internal voice will sound your phone next phone call will sound like that versus I'm so happy to be here talking to you. Be really careful with that. I've I've done that numerous times. All right, you've already seen this. I know. I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm gonna switch screens here. Hold on one second. If you need a one minute break, make it quick. One minute. One minute. Right, Ninety seconds. You gotta pee quick. We gotta pee quick. Oh no. All right. What the hell am I doing here now? How do I do this, Robbie? Oh. I'll see another 30 seconds and we'll get started here. coaching group since we usually have Wednesday meetings that I want to do in here from 12 to 1230. If anybody has any issues, deals going that you have questions or need help with, I'll be in here right at 12. Okay. So if you see people need it. PC 12 to 1230 here. Okay. Everybody good? All right. Does anybody need anything? Okay. All right, let's go on to the next section. Grab your database. Hey, by the way, I'm looking at this thing here. This is a pretty cool, like, this is like your business. This is everything. Are we missing anything in here? Grow your leads, grow your database, open houses, social media, capture more leads, put the lead, build relationships, qualify people, win, 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 make offers, <laughs> play the future. Yeah. Celebrate. The celebrate, yeah, the John Pace method. This is the John, this is not celebrating. This is not celebrating. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to focus on your smart data bank, building your database, feeding it, communicating with it, servicing it, recapping, and the daily success system at the end. 
All right, from Gary again, your database is your business. Building up the number of names in it and the relationships with those names is really at the very core of what building a real estate business is all about. Sandy, we talked about this one, right? We're on the same day. All right. So which part of the lead generation and database model represents your database? The like mm -hmm. what part is that? Yeah, that's the question they're asking. It's right here. Let's see what they said, or it might be not here. Leads, relationship, loop. I think it's anything in the middle here, right? They say anything? They don't. Okay. <laughs> that's the answer. All right. So command is awesome. If you're not using it, if you have a CRM outside it, great. Just whatever system you use, just use it regularly, consistently, put information in, communicate with it, put your people through it. But the command one is really, really good. When it came out, it was horrible and it broke all the time on purpose because they're trying to make it better. But it has got to be a really stable platform, really good platform. So okay. you're really you're gonna make sure switching. Oh, in the next year or two. Oh, oh okay. yeah, this is not a this, our ship is not a fast turning ship. All right, all right. Seth wants it tomorrow. I'm like, we'll get there one day. All right. So the full laws of the database, database, build it, feed it every day, communicate systematically, and service all leads. So what does this mean? Someone give me an overview of why why they put all four points on. It is a process. Love it. Does it stop? You, you go one, two, three, four, and you're done? No. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Kind of like a plan. Oh, I feel like I'm getting really like clicker happy. I apologize. I'm stuck in this for a bit. It matters. But get, this is a system, guys. Get in the habit, use it regularly. Every quarter, you should be talking to everyone in your database. Mm. Really? Where are there? <laughs> Any ahas? Mm -hmm. that? Look at that. Ahas. Or that? <laughs> or that? If there's an aha, I think it's going to be that you guys got to get in the loop of doing this over and over again. Yeah. Oh, that was a really fast section. All right. Law one, build a database. At a minimum, each contact should have, what should it have? A name, contact information, and past business records. What does what past business record mean? No, it's What it was, what it did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If they referred you to someone, should you know who that person referred you is? Yes. If you're talking to a client who referred somebody by somebody else, should you notice that person's name in your record? Mm -hmm. By the way, you guys are getting referrals. What do you do with the referral? What do you do with the person who gave you the referral? I do thank you cards. You said thank you card. It's wonderful. Is there on a five dollar? This is their budget. No, for a client referral or an agent like referral. Do you have a client answer? Agent referral is a five dollar Starbucks gift card. Okay. And a client referral, fifty dollar gift card to Amazon. Nice. With a handwritten letter. Why does the agent get less? I don't know. <laughs> Something, to ask yourself. A mama, mama, Something to ask yourself. <laughs> I mean, the agent's getting a referral fee at the end of the day, right? I got, oh, I know why. That's a good answer. They're also getting like 25%. They are. But I'm going to challenge, I'm not saying you're right, right or wrong. But if you're willing to pay 50 bucks to someone for a referral, yeah. and the agent who's actually the business is getting a $5. Somebody just consider yeah. the relationship you're trying to build. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe leave it, maybe change it. I don't know. That's fair. Just make it neat. Like you're easy. saying you can think of we do. So okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep all the information about your people in there. Lots of notes. John, real quick, I know you're trying to move faster, but doesn't Rucker send out um, a referral gift? They send like a really nice bottle of liquor to I have no their clients. They might. <laughs> 
think okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I went through a phase when I started off, I was doing like full five dollar gift cards. And I got to the point, I don't just get cynical or what. And I was like, why in the hell am I giving people gifts? Yes. Or no, it was closing gifts. That's what you start. I was like, I busted, I busted my butt. And why am I giving someone a gift? And I stopped doing it for like four years. Really? No longer than that. My team made me start getting back to the I have had people complain that they didn't get a gift when I give them a gift. That makes me angry. Mm. And I was like, if, I, if you're here for the gift, I don't want you to be my client. Really? I don't want to work with you. If, if, if my oh, value yeah. to you is that I brought you a gift today closing, not that I got you the best deal or got you multiple offers on the house or saved you on the inspection, we do now. I get gifts. Yeah. And I like it. I'm not a gift giver, so I don't think that way. <laughs> yeah. But that is something that people do. Oh, I remember when I bought my first house, was it the second house? My realtor dropped off this monstrous gift basket. I was like, why? why? I don't That's know. not your love language. I got a house. <laughs> no. I got this great house. I got my gift. Why didn't they get it? I was like, I did. I, did. I don't think that way. My team's like, you're an idiot. We're going to give some gifts again. Oh, okay. And the whole like sign and the whole, you know, the actions of the closing. That's a big thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So we're going to build your database. I got to sidetrack again. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Make sure you have all the information, phone numbers, emails down here. You can start doing the market reports to people. Send out their, hey, here's the information on 123 Main Street. All your history is over here and what you sent to them. Your smartphone is all that stuff, right? It's great. Uh, check out Command Your Database on Connect. I guess you can do some more research. They have classes or stuff, trainings that you can take on getting better at command. I probably should take that myself. Good Lord. All right, we're going to skip with that. All right. All right. Feed it every day. Prospecting and marketing. They put prospecting on top because that's most important. Thank you very much. Your sphere will generate new repeat or referral business. It should. That's healthy. I'm going to say aha right away. All right, same slide twice with a bigger font. <laughs> really, your sphere will generate new repeat or referral business if you do the loop correctly. Testimonies reviews. Who is asking their clients to give them reviews? I've never done that. Thank you, Kristen. You've not. Why? There's no, there's no real reason. When, you, when you're looking for something, where's the first place you go? I'm not, not me. I don't, I don't look at reviews, but I do like to get them. You know, reviews, know but where do people go? They go online. Yeah. yeah. Right? And if you happen to see 85 stars on a site, does it yeah. catch your attention? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What happens if a business has three reviews at three and a half stars? It still takes your attention. In, in the right way? <laughs> yeah. So you should have every single client review it. Yeah. But did you know that 4.9 generates more business than 5.0? Yeah. Because why? So because I think the five is fake. <laughs> yes. The four eight four nine four seven is more authentic. Yeah. Yep. They're real. They screw up and they're fixing it. They're, yeah. they're human. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a very good point. Yes. Unbelievable. But at the end of the day, your client should review you. You should be asking for those users, and you should have a system to send them links to where you want them to review. Like, what are the best places to do it? Facebook and Google. Facebook and Yelp. Google. I would use Google. Google, Google yeah. is the number one. Google's taking over. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, King Google is here. I would use Google for sure. We actually throw people on Zillow still. That's our fourth review option. Um, I got a call last night from someone who the only reason they called us is we have 125 reviews on Zillow or something like that. Yeah. It was like 4.8 stars, whatever the number was. And so he called us. So we don't pay for solo, but every now and then I get something to go. <laughs> All right. What areas of business or customer service could you ask someone to provide a testimony or review on? Responsiveness, attention to detail, professionalism, empathy, clear communication, et cetera. I know realtors who will say, hey, listen, I know you're really busy. I've already created a review for you on your behalf. How many emails do you? If you like it, you're welcome to use it. Right your own. They systematize it, make it easier for someone not to have to think about it. They're gonna go, that sounds right. How many days? Only problem is we have not done that, but people do it. I guess they're using different ones. Like 
Usually yeah. ones I hear is like a lot of times a realtor write it like we had a great inspection and you know, we're able to save them five thousand dollars or like that they made some personal points and it said to the client, Does it sound like you? It does. I've heard that helps you get more reviews. I've not tried that. But you could you could guide your client on what areas that you would like to have to talk about. Really, we're going through the ahas like ridiculously fast right now. All right. Anything on on testimonials? Google, please. I need to do my Google. Yes, you I do. Yes, you do. Please do it. I need to circle back. To Facebook page, Instagram yeah. page. Yeah, I need to. Places people to find you, for sure. Um, if you don't have one in your system, first of all, does everyone have a system yeah. for contract to close? If you don't, KW has one. You can copy and paste it and then modify it to your own. But in there should be a place where you're asking your clients to review. I would do it when I was heavy, heavy into buyers, and I'd be at the closing table. I have my little closing table. <laughs> I would, we walk out the door and say, Hey guys, really, I'm really happy for you. And I would always, I would feather in the, and ask, I'm like, Do you know someone else? You guys are amazing. I love people like you. Who else do you know that I can help? And um, usually it would say, You've been amazing. It's been great. And yeah, we'll keep you in mind. Or whatever. I would then say, Hey, for the next four weeks, I'm gonna call you every week to check in and make sure things are good. You don't have to pick up, but you know that the next week you're gonna hear from me four times so that you know if something does go wrong, you can pick up and say something. Or at least wanna chat and say hi to you. And so for every four weeks, I would just make those four phone calls every week. It was a closing on Thursday, it's Thursday, 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 whatever it was. I had a system behind it, and then you was gonna do it, and it built trust post closing that I wasn't there just for the transaction. And this was before we had online. This is like an 0508 type of stuff. So I would highly recommend you do something like that. And get a system post closing because you, when you're helping someone on the buyer side, how often do you guys talk to your clients? Sometimes daily, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, sometimes hourly. Sometimes hourly. It's consistent, consistent, and then you close and it's crickets. And their first thought may be, oh, they were just based on the commission check. They're done. Yeah. So build a build a post closing system where you have a way to communicate with them regularly, so they feel love from you at the end of the day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do it the way you. Do it. I love the weekly phone call, or it can be a text. But just hey, just check in again. You know, I warm up front. You don't have to pick up. They don't feel obliged. They never hear. All right. <laughs> Communicate. <laughs> To succeed at a high level in real estate sales, you must commit to frequent contact with the database with the intent of building close relationships. I guess Gary's the only person recording today. All of our clothes. This is going back to what we were talking about, right? Consistent, 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 consistent. <coughs> Systematically. There's some tags you talked about. So they here they have like a VIP person who loves golf. You can get really thing, you can get really detailed on it. A military person who's also an investor, someone who refer who is a referral and loves dogs. Yes. So in the we were talking about earlier, the uh about tags, is it unnecessarily detailed to put things like love dogs? Yeah. It's your call. Yeah. And, and only use only put a tag in if it's a way for you to use it. If it helps remind you that. You know, if you're ever going to do an event around certain things, we've talked this stuff on our team like we're going to do an event for bear lovers, we're going to do an event for wine lovers, we're going to do an event for dog lovers, right? The catch with that is that if someone's not in one of those groups, they don't get invited to an event, right? So you got to be careful how you use tags. You want to make sure that everyone's brought into your family and no one's excluded, right? So we do put on like for us, we do two big events: one in the spring, one in the fall, one for adults, one for kids. Okay. And everyone in our database is invited to it. And then we do an all, uh, we do a VIP one. It's our VIP one where the hell we did. Oh, we did it the ice cream. The ice cream that come out with a spoon of ice cream on us. Say hi, it was just a stupid eye. It was perfect. Right? So use it that way. Be careful of how you might use tags to have a small group where it's not as inclusive. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. 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 Any other thoughts on tags? 
segmenting your database, grouping your database. Definitely be doing it, but be systematic in how you do it. Make sure it's a, a way that levels your database up versus breaking it down. And that was the, I want to be able to go in with every conversation and have the same, I guess, filter of when I'm putting in their tags and notes, I'm checking all the same boxes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was putting so many categories that I would spend 20 minutes. Oh, do they, oh, do they have a family? Yeah. Uh, yes. Do they You're have categorizing for the sake of categorizing, not for any of that. The big thing you should be looking at is do I have all the information and are they on a market report? Do I have a systematic way of keeping them not me having to do it? Are you doing a newsletter every month? Jessica puts that together, she sends it out, I don't touch it. She sends it out. My clients get that once a month. They get two market reports every month. So that's three touches for me if I even call it. Then they hear it once a quarter. And two client events, we do a calendar in the year. So we got a system that we communicate with year after year after year. Yes. So, like, let's say you do have a client with a certain tag, right? So we give you dog levels for example. Yeah. Do you send them like a dog link, you know, month, but based on that stuff. You could, you could do some marketing around. You can do an event thing. Yeah, saw an article about a new dog park opening up, and you pull your dog tag, and said everyone with that article. Yeah. Um, just gotta be careful because you have one group that gets a lot of communication and it would know very much. You gotta have a really good system behind that. Yeah. Okay. Right, here we are. Communicate with your segments. Source. That's real estate. Source of the source. What the slide here basically is saying. There you go. Yeah. Oh. So, for example, for golf, customized message, review of golf courses per neighborhood in the area relevant to the location. So, some of those golf, you can send them homes that are on golf courses. Right. Just to tease look fancy a little bit. Right. Which one do we want golf course? Here's a few. <laughs> Investor, market stats, different degree of locations based upon market, market people moving to and moving from, dog lovers. Low cost vaccination sites or low cost pet services, or whatever it might be. And Taylor, just make sure that you're, if you're doing it that way, make sure there's not a group that's getting dropped off because they don't have a tag. You know, finally make sure everyone's getting communication. Yeah. Uh, communicate with value <laughs> for lead. We have a thing called 19 to connect. Why do we have a plan around leads? What's the goal of a lead? To become a contact. So it might be four touches quarterly, 12 touches with monthly email, newsletter, market report, or video, and or video, two touches, promotional direct, maybe magnet, maybe it's a mail postcard, maybe it just was just sold, and then one touch, annual event, party, movie screen, get together. One to cement a high value touch that solidifies a relationship you've just established, open store for your interactions. And then your contacts, you have 36 to convert. Is it saying that the 19 is part of the 36? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. I feel like it is because I think the rule is 36 touches a year. Well, it's funny. If you look at it, yeah. same number of phone calls. Here you have a monthly email. Here you're getting a bi weekly, a bi -weekly which is your yeah. market report. This says two touches, two touches, one touch, four touches. Such as it's almost the exact same thing. My suggestion is build one system now. If you don't have one, and put everyone on. Mm -hmm. And then as you get you get bigger and you have help, you can start differentiating between one or the other. So if you don't have a system, just build one and get everyone going. That's not, for us, it's literally it's deep run one system. Yeah, there's 17 more touches. Now there's one thing called, do they, say, do they have it on here? So they say eight, one to cement. I've seen eight to cement where it's like, it's like eight touches a week apart from each other. So like someone, a lead comes through, like you're communicating on a weekly basis, might be a phone call, might be a text, might be an email, and you have a plan of how to, to take that person you don't know and turn them into someone you do know. So I don't know why it says one to spend, I would say it's eight to cement. I have a question real quick. Yeah. Does Brevity, when a 
when you have like a smart plan or whatever it's called, the jerk campaign go out to them. Is Brevity smart enough to know when they respond that it can stop yes. the audits? Oh, so I, I, I told what's his name here that the command's broken until yeah. we fix it. Yeah. Not, it's not broken. Yeah, it's broken. Yeah. yeah I have to manually go in and change a system. It's broken. Yeah. Yeah. The whole point of animation is to keep me out of it. Right. It's, to your point. Okay. I hope they change that. Oh, soon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What's good, guys? The big picture here is what do you have as a system for someone to come to your database that's not just for calls? It's for calls and a bi weekly email and two events and then for maybe four promotional events, just listed, just sold, whatever it might be. Get a system in place so when someone comes in, you hit start and it runs the entire year. Make sense? And if you're new, you're going to screw this one up. It's okay. The fact you're building something is the most important part. It doesn't have to be perfect. Most realtors don't do this. They don't do the basics. Yeah, until you're five. Until you're five. <laughs> All right. We already talked about your database. Again, a smart database which comes your data bank. In other words, you have people in your phone, but you don't do anything with them. It just sits there. So work them and then get systematic behind it. All right, AHAS. I'm really coming fast and furious with the AHAS today. <laughs> Who's got something? Come on. I like how um, when it came to the tags, like yeah. I didn't know, it, you know, because I'm thinking to myself, I only have to send this thing, yeah. you know, things of that nature. Like I can just send a simple, you know, coupon if you talk about grooming services for our dogs, you know, just something like that. So that you know, yeah, let, let tags be your filter so you can really be good, grand over people. For us, when we do a client event, we'll send out a um, like we'll send out the invite and we'll tag everybody that it went out to. If they respond, they're coming. When another tag goes on, so that I can filter people who have not responded, and I can get those people over again. Not the ones who already said yes. So you can use tags for a lot of different things. So you're, you're communicating appropriately to your people. Anything else? I'm going to hire a college kid to do this. Um, organization for me in my community. Why? And that's a beautiful thing to say, but why? I don't have time. Most realtors, one, don't have time, and two, aren't what? Kristen, yes. are you a really a deep down organized person? I freaking hate it. Yes. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. I'm super organized, yeah. but for some reason, right. when it comes to, like, I'm super just, like, very OCD, but then when it comes to, like, Sitting on the computer, Matt, and some of my values like just to sit. I hired yeah. someone. Yeah, yeah, so that's a thing. I like, hire a low level, like mm -hmm. college student, um, high school student, somebody, retiree. a retiree, somebody that knows and has time. Right. Like the girl who does it for me is a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. So she's constantly on the computer when it's convenient for her. Right. And I gave her very little to do my database entry mm -hmm. and to clean it up. And she's literally in a scrub right now. Uh, she's been in it for about two weeks because we have like 3,300 contacts in there. Mm -hmm. She's going through each one and texting them and saying, hey, this is what we're missing from yes, you. Yes, yeah. Right? So yeah. she's trying to compile it and get it cleaned so that then we can set up the smart plans to do what they need to do. And <laughs> right. Add the tags yeah. and all that. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of like because I, I didn't start at, on command at zero contacts. Yeah. I started at five years in. Mm -hmm. And like I never yeah. did a database. So I'm now cleaning. And it's, it's a hot mess right now. But yeah. I put the things in place to clean it. And it's worth every penny. Yeah, that's kind of what it is mm -hmm. on there. Like, like a TC. Yeah. A TC is worth every penny. And this comes every back penny. to the point where you're making enough money that you can start leveraging money for time. Time, right. Yeah. And Anything leveraging that. money for a better experience for your clients and for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So this goes back to like calculating how much money you make on a dollar per hour basis. And if you're making over $25 an hour, why are you doing $10 an hour work? Well, that's exactly what I do. I set a threshold. so. Um, two years ago, it was if anything cost me a hundred dollars or less, I source it out. Now I'm up around five hundred dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. If it costs me less than that, I source it out. I don't mess with it because my time is better spent in lead gen yeah, exactly. in other places for my team and 
And I'm noticing like on, cause this is my third year in, so as I'm coming up on the fourth year, I'm understanding the process of like, what they say of consistency is like, don't lose people because you keep, you keep it going, you automate it because you don't want to get on Facebook and find out like, damn, you bought a house. I, I and guess. These are friends, well, you know, how long on this thing. And I have yeah, your contact I information, but I, I might have missed you. Or I, get I missed out on 1.4. Wow. When I drove past the house, like, on sales and some yeah. bitch. Oh, Every time. Like, no. It happens. And that's exactly yeah. how you feel. Yeah, but that's why the organization and stuff is yeah. important. So that's why I found, I, I, I sourced it out oh, first. <laughs> yes. Come on, man, John. What are you doing? What are you doing? Let's go, Greg. Wait, he's got to fix his clicker. I forced it out before. You can, you can have that conversation go a million ways by saying yeah. that. Yeah. I found right. it was more effective. I think I broke when I dropped it. Yeah, what happened to your other students? Yeah. So, it, it's a process. Probably. Yeah. Probably just left. All right, I got to sit over here. Uh, all right, we're going to talk about servicing your database. What else going on here? Your job is to build a community and serve the community. This is not surprising to anyone we've been talking about the past two hours. <laughs> service all leads. Why do they think they said service all leads versus service leads? Has anyone ever gotten to the point where they said, oh, $75,000 house, I really want to be doing 300, 400, 500, 800,000 our clients. Mm -hmm. I don't. Why? Because I tell my clients on the low end, like, I'm going to treat you the same as if I treat mm -hmm. somebody with a million dollars because it's the it's the model. It doesn't matter, right? You're going to get the same step. So yeah. that's kind of why. And it, it, it makes them feel like, because I have people say, well, I don't age you don't want to talk to me because I don't have a certain credit score or I'm only qualified for a certain amount. Baby, it's we gonna get it done, whatever we gotta yes. do, and get you whatever you need for your family to get you to that point of <coughs> increasing or whatever you want to do. So it's like that's what it means to me. Like, treat them all the same. I also tell you a story. I told some clients like in that fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars range, you came back with eight hundred thousand. Exactly. And you just don't know. What can people you like? Careful of discriminating on the price band. Mm -hmm. Uh, this month, I really don't, can't afford to do a 75. They got to take all my time. And sometimes they do. Um, but sometimes there's also a uh, opportunity down the road. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Is this working? Oh, that's good. Oh. Did you feel the batteries? On button. There you go. Hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Like the command, you can obviously use opportunity manager, campaigns, consumer, all that stuff on here. It's a really nice way to track your clients and where they went to the process. Uh, check a command, your database on connect, a lot more stuff on how to use command just to make sure you're tracking people correctly. <laughs> All right. Build a database, feed it, communicate systematically, and service all leads. Repeat, 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 repeat. And aha, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so trust in your database. Follow the four laws. Don't quit too soon. As you said before, what happens to realtors when they get busy? They stop doing this. And then they realize they have nothing else to do. They have no business, so they just start going over again from scratch. Build your 36 touch campaign. It takes time to get real results. Building this campaign here is the long, slow process of building relationships. It takes time. Don't expect your database to, I've been lead generating for two weeks. Where's the business? This takes time to build up internet leads door knocking open house open houses the best thing you can do to get ready to go buyers if you're not doing them do them if you don't have a listing call someone who does that's famous that was my aha there you before go. we even get there mm -hmm. right it's coming it's uh -huh. ah. <laughs> open houses are the best source for new agents think long term okay, this is a long play guys your database is a long term play but it can yield big, big results. Always come from care and service, and the real estate business is a relationship business. One of the best things KW has finally done is switch to this being relationship. Um, Bold used to be all about for sale by owners, expired, door knocking, all that stuff people you have not met, 
and they ignored the database. And they made some changes in leadership there, thank God. And now it's very much your database is your database, your sphere, your sphere. So please put your time into that. Ah. All right. Um, like the ahas? Yes. Like this. A little too soon. Do you like me now? Do you like me now? Do you like me now? Like me now? <laughs> All right. Uh, how, I think we're getting towards the end here, guys. Yeah. yeah. How has your thinking changed on this topic? Or any of the things we talked about? Give me a thinking thought here. What has changed? I feel good. I feel good with the idea that it's, it's a system. It's not like I have to create it from scratch. It's not like, you know, the people that are extremely successful or, you know, divine and they're just these special creatures. They're following a time tested system and they're consistent in it. And I can do it. You ever heard the phrase R and D? Research and development, you heard of that? Yeah. yeah. What's the other acronym for R and D? Rip off and duplicate. <laughs> yes. And KW is on stage, you'll say it over and over again. I'm R and Ding this. I mean, you're doing this, I'm gonna copy what you're doing and use it in my system. They want you to. We built the models, use the models, R and D, everything. Don't start from scratch. Yeah. People have come before you and screwed up, including myself, a lot. Use our best practices, not our worst cases. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. Find someone who's doing what you want to do and go copy them mm -hmm. and make it better. It's a compliment to them. So what are you feeling? What are you feeling differently about now? Okay. Is lead generation scary? No. You feel better about it, like picking the phone up? Yeah. If I stop it right now and have everyone pick the phone up, would you feel comfortable calling? Yeah. I'll take a call with you. Look at you. <laughs> All right. What behavior is going to be different? What actions are you guys going to take? I'm going to organize way more than I've been. Well, hold on. I'm going to stop you now because you said you were organizing like crazy and yeah. driving you nuts. So yeah, I'm, I'm talking about this, 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 the command and the. Are you sure? Yeah. You know, like I'm organizing like my phone and I go through and I do the D2 and all of that, but like I need to get it into the system because like. I need to be a part of those emails. I have so many agents like, hey, price reduction, hey, this, hey, that. And I'm like, shit, where? I need to be. You said your phone's organized? Right. It is. You can CSV file your contact oh, list, export, export yeah. it out, and import it into command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I want all of these things in the beginning. Yeah. And then I got this in. So give me a favor, pull up your phone, okay. find an hour, and time block it. Okay. So I can do that. You put it on a calendar, you're going to hold yourself to the appointment. If, you, if it's in your head, you're going to forget about it because something else is going to show up in about 30 minutes from now. Some, someone's going to show up thinking they're more important than what you can get done. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me an action you guys are going to take going forward that's different from what you've been doing. Everything. Everything. <laughs> time, block? time block lead gen. Time block lead gen. If you want to make me really happy, I'll give you my information. If you want to send me a copy, a, a screenshot of your, of your calendar for next week, I would love to see it, no. please. No. The ones who don't, I'm gonna publicly shame you. <laughs> and don't overdo your calendars, guys. Like I said, time block your morning, leave your afternoons over. And what goes in your calendar first? Career. Oh, that can be. Say it again. Oh, hey guys, real quick. What goes in your calendar first? Personal. Your family. <clears throat> Whatever family needs you, families include yourself. So when I time block my year, meaning I look at my calendar for the year, what am I putting on my calendar for the year first? Vacations. Vacations. When do you do that? In October. Summer? Yeah. Oh, okay. For the next year. Yeah. I don't do that. I don't do that. And what happens is work fills every void available. With, with, without discrimination, it will take every last ounce you have of time. All right. Any tools you guys invoke that you haven't been using? Realtors make a mistake, and you're, you're ready to think about this point of being creative first, yeah. systematic, maybe one day. And what happens rather than saying, Here's my system, how can I be creative in the system I have? 
I'm going to do this. Here's how it's going to work. Oh, here's a creative. I'm going to do an article on this instead, or I'm going to pull this. Yeah. This, this month's about dogs. Next month's about beer. Next month's about, I don't know, whatever, camping, right? But have your system set up first so that you can fit the creativity within the framework versus it being creative. Yes. That makes sense? Success system, we've already seen this. 15 times now. <laughs> I think they're trying to get a point across to you guys. So. Do not call this. Yeah. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. Another affirmation. affirmation. And we'll play time. I love all the role that we have to do. <laughs> Celebrate your successes, guys. Use command. Um, fair attention. I had, has this been good? Yeah. Yes. Do we miss anything? Yeah. I have two asks of you guys okay. as a favor to me. Number one, you have a review link. They get the review links out. No, you, you should after. I think so it comes good. out. I have no idea. When those come out, well, however they do, I'm not sure if there's a system, obviously. Oh, we would you do please it. do it? Would everyone say, I will do it? I will. And here's the reason why. Um, like I am building up my coaching and teaching part of the business, and I need those reviews to be able to move on to the next level. I have to have a certain number of reviews. So if you would do that for me, that would mean the world to me. The second thing, um, Grid. Anyone know what Grid is? This is my investor group. Rob Chavez out of Reston, uh, he's with KW. They do almost 300 sites a year. Started his business with investors. He started an investor group that meets once a month up there. He now has 14,000 people in his startup group, middle group. You want to talk about a, we want to talk about a group that shows up and builds and funnels into his business. It's huge. So he actually is syndicating it. He's actually franchising, if you will, and we are the local grid of Richmond. And so every second Tuesday, last night was our last meeting, um, we do a topic for an hour and a half about our invest. And there's no obligation. I love realtors to come. It's about building a community where you guys get to learn and you can take that and use it somewhere else. And you might bring people that can help the people that we bring as well. So we'd love to see all of you come here second Tuesday of every month in this room mm, at 5 30 PM. And last night we talked about syndication and self-directed IRAs. Did you know you can use your IRA to buy real estate? Yes. You get the tax savings on the money on the front, and then you get to put it out there. And the investment vehicle is the property, not stocks and bonds. You can also that my wife's going to keep hers in the traditional, and I'm going to take mine, and I'm going to start buying properties with mine. So there's some different. We talk about buy and hold, flips, wholesaling, all that stuff. Would love to have you come. It's like not a group. We just show up and we learn from each other. Second Tuesday of each month. Is it a link? Oh, go to gridrichmond.com and you can subscribe to our meetup group and I'll send you reminders on it. Grid, G-R-I-D, richmond.com. And since you're under your time frame, yes. you and the prize. I, <laughs> I heard earlier, oh crap, we are way behind. The second so, one went a lot faster. So I wanted to show you guys, so since you're here, Pull out your phone. You're going to do your eval for John right now. Thank you. I'm going to show you how to do that. And for those that were here Monday, who didn't do the one for that fabulous class. I heard it was amazing. <laughs> uh, please do, do, do that as well. So shameless plug. So you're going to go to KWU eval, E-V-A-L dot com. KWU eval Dot com. I did it. Okay. Right. Good job. You're on group text. Right? It is in that group text, yes, that I sent from Monday. Uh, uh, yes. And then. And so what? So just go to kwueval.com. The first question is going to say, what region are you? And you can fill it out too. What region? Virginia. You can scroll down, pick Virginia. And it'll say, what's your class for the region, for KWR, blah, 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 put for Market Center, MC. I think it says MC Market Center. And then it's going to say Topic. And you can scroll down and find Ignite. Five. Mon yes, he was five and six. You can pick either one of those two. Mine, you can pick any of the one through fours. And then it's going to ask Instructor. You're not on there yet, are you? No. Okay. Then scroll all the way to the bottom. It'll say instructor not found. 
click that, it's going to give you an open dialog box, and then type in John, J-O-H-N, Pace, P-A-C-E, and then you start your rating. And I'm sure he's going to get all five. Yay! Yeah. 4.9, 4.9. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but this really helps because we did pay to have a lot of us went through train the presenter and then for people that want to become like kwri trainers we have to have a minimum of 100 so it really does matter if you think oh it doesn't matter if i don't go in and do it it does matter we need every everyone counts so thank you you're welcome Appreciate thank it. you any, uh, uh, any more ahas uh guys or questions or thoughts Thing. I'm saying aha uh -huh in my sleep. I know, right? They're coming fast and furious. Agents helping agents. Everyone sign in to the uh sign in. Trying to see yes. who's on. All right, guys. You got 30 extra minutes, they'll be generate. Call someone. That's right. Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much, Patrice. Thank you. All right, guys. Been fun. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you. Uh someone said so Shavana said, who created the promise script? I missed the uh, name. Anderson Hicks group. Anderson Hicks Group. I found it the other day. You can go into KWRI and in Connect, you can um, put in Promise Script and there are some videos and things on it. Okay. Everybody good? Hey, Josh. Josh. Share. Only Tyler, I'm making sure I got everybody on. Candace, Aliyah, Tyler, Savannah. Okay, you guys have a good one. Thanks for being on. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you. Yeah.